Welcome and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Free Media, Free Minds. Today we're going to be looking at a critical issue to the free flow of information in society. The question of whistleblowers, that's, that's you and me, you at home, coming forward with the, with the information that you're really holding that could matter to society. In the studio with me, I have uh, Mario Ambrosini, well, Member of Parliament for the IFP, Debbie Vogel with uh, Fight Against Corruption, and Lorraine Martins with the Open Democracy Access Center. Welcome, guys. Thank you for, for joining us. Before we get into the discussion, we're going to take a look at an insert that's been prepared on the topic. Let's check it out. My name is Imran Mukadam, and I am the whistleblower in the bread price fixing debacle. Um, I brought the whole issue to the fore with regards to bread price fixing. I believe that um, if you are, if you become aware of an injustice or corruption or an oppression of human rights, then it would be your duty to stand up. But I also wouldn't advise um, somebody to just go out and say what's happening without weighing up the risk. If the risk is that you could lose your job or the risk is that you could be held um, as, as implications on you to be victimized, then it would be better to do it anonymously. But if you stand, if you feel strongly about what, you, what you're standing up for and you want to make, make it known, then you need, to, you need to speak out. You can't just uh, sit in the little corner and let it happen. You need to speak out and you need to make a difference and you need to stand up for what you believe is right. And um, despite the new legislation, which would be uh, putting restrictions on whistleblowers, I think even going to jail for 25 years um, for speaking out against the corrupt, corrupt government um, is worth the risk if you feel strongly about it. And uh, I live by a motto, and that motto is, the truth is a majority of one. We find in society today, today being dictated by corporate greed. And um, the capitalist system feeds on suppressing the information, from the keeping information away from the people about the reality of how, they, how people are being exploited. And it's important that as a society we stand up and say that we will no longer be exploited, we will no longer be profiteered from, and we will no longer be subjugated to a system that um, enriches the few and disempowers the majority of people. So, Mario, in your words, what is a whistleblower? A whistleblower is somebody who sees something wrong, doesn't keep it for himself, and tells other people, mainly the authorities or the management of a company, in order to stop the wrong things from happening. And the legislation about whistleblower is, uh, is designed to make sure that whoever does so is going to be protected. Mm. The legislation is in place and is going to be protected from retaliations within the workplace. Eh? Sure. Not necessarily from retaliations from the state. If the whistleblower reveals eh, activities eh, mm -hmm. which also point the finger to himself. Okay. We're going to, we're going to look at the law in some detail, but let's, let's first hear from you, Lorraine. Why in South Africa is whistleblowing important today? Whistleblower is important because it, the person who normally sees, especially in the workplace, if you look at the workplace, the person who knows what's happening and when wrongdoing is taking place would be the person who's employed. Um, you and I, for instance, would go into a hospital and not really know what's happening in the hospital. But those nurses, they know what's happening in the hospital. So they're the important people. It's important to also raise issues of wrongdoing. And especially in the South African context, a lot of the whistleblowing is around corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption and abuse of power. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Debbie, you've actually been a whistleblower. Why don't you give us a quick uh, example from your own life? For example, um, there's a stigma that is attached to you as a whistleblower. Mm. You're labelled a troublemaker. Um, employment becomes very difficult, uh, either because the prospective employer is worried what might follow you, or there's just a general misconception mm. that if you blew the whistle, you were perhaps somehow implicated in a crime or involved, and not necessarily just a bystander who decided to be honest and speak mm. up. 
and mm. that that has a, a very detrimental effect on people wanting to speak up because the negative connotation that has come before is what they think it's yeah. about. So rather than being the heroes of a democracy holding power to account, whistleblowers are seen as, uh, as some kind of outcasts, really. Yes, which is quite ridiculous because they're, the, they're completely the opposite. I mean, Lorraine, re recently published research has shown an increase in wasteful expenditure and corruption in government, and at the same time a decrease, fewer and fewer people blowing the whistle. W why is that, do you think? Um, yes, the Public Service Commission um, report of 20, uh, 2010 uh, showed that there was a 12-fold increase in wasteful expenditure since 2007. Yet um, our organization, the Open Democracy Advice Center, has been doing marginal surveys for the last uh, three years. And what we have noticed is that fewer people are actually blowing the whistle. Mm. And the reason is that there is a climate of fear in the country. Uh, lots of people have lost their lives. In Pumalanga, quite a few people were killed for blowing the whistle. It even happened in uh, the Northwest and as in the Eastern Cape as well. There's the fear of being victimized, of losing your job, of being sidelined when there's a chance for a promotion. Uh, and Mario, what are some of the protections that the laws today do give whistleblowers? See, we need to differentiate between the whistleblower who is innocent eh, and the whistleblower who participated in the very activity that he is or she trying to expose. There are extensive protections for the whistleblower who is innocent to ensure that the whistleblower doesn't become a victim. Those protections uh, are written in the law. Law is not necessarily reality. Mm -hmm. The law requires uh, not just compliance with the law, but a change of attitude. The, what you were mentioning about, the changes of perspective, mm -hmm. recognizing that the whistleblower is rendering a service to our democracy, mm -hmm. is upholding values, and is making the life of everyone a better life. Mm -hmm. The difficulty that we have, as Lorraine was mentioning, is that corruption become, is becoming prevalent. Mm -hmm. Corruption is becoming the rule, lack of corruption is becoming the exception. Mm -hmm. So in that environment, uh, it often happens uh, that those who are in the position of blowing the whistle, they themselves are involved. Mm -hmm. So by blowing the whistles, they take the risk of incriminating themselves. Yeah. If you look at the case of uh, Alan Langton, who blew the whistle on one of the largest scandals in KwaZulu-Natal, and his personal odysseys of being shot at, Mm. having to live in parks. Here there is a guy who incriminated himself uh, and the state could not protect him mm. until the political system got involved. So for those type of people who are trying to come clean mm. by blowing the whistle, the legislative protection is still not in place. Yeah. So, so Debbie, if, if someone's sitting at home watching this and they're aware of some wrongdoing, some abuse of power, that doesn't implicate them. They just know it because they've seen it happening. What are some of the steps they should take? What are some of the options open to them? Well, one thing that we do as an organization is give them a platform that they can turn to, specifically knowing that we've walked in those shoes. We understand the fear. We understand the, the anxiety and the concerns you have, especially if you've got families and you, know, you, you stand to lose things. And actually offer that support and that counselling. We liaise uh, quite closely with the relevant authorities that be because we cannot um, investigate things on our own. We work with um, ODAC, we have a relationship with ODAC, we work with like the Special Investigations Unit, we have various um, parliamentarians, ministers of parliament, members of parliament who are from across the board no particular political party that we turn to for advice and counsel. We have attorneys on board that would offer legal advice. Um, but the first, the first thing that we do is we, we motivate that there is merit, that a whistleblower adds value to society. They do not take away from it. And there are procedures and rules and regulations in place 
they don't always work. I mean, let's be honest, there are loopholes and they, they do fail people very often. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people and organizations out there that care and that are willing to actually step up to the plate and not try and get political mileage out of it, but yeah. stand their ground. So, so the law, the Protective Disclosures Act, says that you can go to someone for legal advice as a first step and you will be protected in that. But after that, it really encourages you to, to go to the organization where the mismanagement or fraud is taking place and report it to your employer. Lorraine, what are some of the, the challenges in going that route? The biggest challenge in going that route, and this, we, we run a toll-free helpline, and in terms of the helpline, what people are telling us is that uh, they fear that they're going to lose their jobs if they go to the employer. Um, in a large organisation, your employer is quite remote, if you think of the state. So going to the employer could be going right up to the minister of a, a government department. But in a smaller organisation, uh, your employer is more immediate. Uh, you don't have to go to your employer. For instance, if, you're, if there are only three of you working in an organization and the employer is doing something wrong, you can go outside. So you can go outside, even if it's exceptionally serious. You don't have to blow the whistle to your employer. So if it's a doctor who operates while under the influence of alcohol, you don't have to go through those channels of internal blowing the whistle. You can go outside. And if you decide to go to your employer, what are some of the things you should be entitled to expect from your employer? What should they do when you come with some information? The drawback of the Act as it stands at the moment is that, number one, there is no duty to investigate. Um, obviously, you blow the whistle because you hope that something will be done, the wrong will be remedied. Um, the Act doesn't say that the employer has to investigate. And often what happens, the bad whistleblowing is that uh, all the attention is drawn to the whistleblower, so the message gets lost and nobody investigates that. Mm. And uh, the employee then uh, is yeah. victimized. So, so the messenger gets shot and the yes. wrongdoing continues. Mm. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we're going to look at the pros and cons of taking your information outside of your organization to government authorities and to the media. We're going to look at the secrecy bill and what impact that has on whistleblowers and look at uh, promising new technologies. We've seen WikiLeaks and, and whether we need to worry about the South African law at all or whether we can just uh, publish our information anonymously on the internet. All of that uh, after this short break. You're, list you're watching uh, Free Media, Free Minds. We'll be back shortly. Hi, welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. This evening we're discussing whistleblowers, the heroes of our democracy, the people who come forward with information we need to protect our rights and to hold those in power accountable. Before the break, we were saying there are a number of NGOs that can give legal advice because it's a highly regulated uh, thing, whistleblowing. If you give the information to the wrong people, you can land up in a lot of trouble, losing your job, etc. Lorraine, your organization has a toll-free number. Do you want to just give that out at this point? Yes, it is 0800-525352. 0800-525352. And that's really a number that anyone can call uh, if they are aware of wrongdoing and want to make it public and want to do it in a way that protects themselves as much as possible. Uh, now, the Law Reform Commission has submitted to the Department of Justice a number of recommendations about how the law can be strengthened. M Mario, take us through what are those? Uh, how can this law be strengthened to protect whistleblowers? As I said, one of the main concerns, there are a number of concerns, and you mentioned before also the issue of the internet, but the main concern is to investigate the allegations of whistleblowers protect whistleblowers who are somehow in, implicated themselves uh, in the conduct uh, they are uh, blowing the whistle about, uh, protect anonymity, 
and, and create a climate of education that has not been, has not been achieved yet. Mm. We need to change attitudes over and above changing the law. Mm. These are my main concern. My other concern are about the secrecy bill and the freedom of the internet. Mm. It gets very difficult to blow the whistle if the information you are blowing the whistle about uh, has been classified as secret. Mm. And by virtue of uh, revealing that information, you stand to uh, face prison terms up to 20 years. In the bill, as it stands now, there is an exception in terms uh, of protecting whistleblowers uh, who reveals uh, instances of conduct, instances of corruption. But that doesn't go enough, uh, doesn't go far enough when those instances uh, are surrounded by secrecy and the information which is released is not in itself proof of corruption. So it needs to be expanded. And we have uh, fought to have uh, a public interest defense and the public domain defense. So that the space of circulations of secret information, which is important for society to know, can be broader. Mm -hmm. The other great concern is about the freedom of the internet. And I'm the only one who has been fighting this battle in Parliament, unfortunately. And the difficulty is that the freedom of the internet has been cut down one piece at a time mm. for what appears as very good reasons. Good intent, bad law. The first mm. one was in respect of the fight against child pornography. Mm. Now we're going to take another piece out in respect of the protection of personal information. Be before and the third one, the uh, the trafficking of people. At mm -hmm. the end, we are going to have uh, a situation where anonymity on the internet will no longer exist. Yeah. Yeah. We, in fact, we have an entire show in the series looking at the question of internet freedom, which is, which is obviously critical. I, I mean, Debbie, the, the current law doesn't uh, protect your anonymity, your ability to hide your identity as a whistleblower. Why is that so important to give whistleblowers that right to be anonymous? A lot of people stand to lose so much, you know, if, if they are named. And I think because of the, again, I, I come back to the stigma that is attached to whistleblowing and the, the way it is genuinely perceived um, is, is still terribly negative. And that is something that, that needs to change. Society's mindset needs to change towards that before people will, will feel more comfortable mm -hmm. and that they will know um, that the regulations and the rules, et cetera, that are in place um, are there for a purpose. But the, the bottom line is, and, and we speak from personal experience, with all those things in place, it still had a negative impact. Mm -hmm. And, um, and why is that? You know, it's, yeah. it's because generally there's that, that misconception out there um, that somehow you take away from society. Yeah, you know, when the opposite is true. In fact, yeah, I mean, the majority of money that is, that is reported, that is uncovered with regards to corruption, it's done so through whistleblowers. Sure. You know, it's not your, your auditors and things like that. It, it's done through whistleblowers. Lorraine, under what circumstances can a whistleblower legally go to the media and still claim whistleblower protection? A whistleblower can go to the media if the whistleblower has blown the whistle internally within the organization and nothing's been done about it. He or she could also go outside if it's an exceptionally serious matter. Mm. Um, then there are lots of other um, sort of drawbacks to going outside in that uh, it depends on who you go to, so why they would ask. The onus now shifts to the whistleblower to prove that I had to go outside, mm. and these are the reasons. So it's who you go to, uh, under yeah. what circumstances. So there's a strong cetera. risk that by going to a journalist, you could forfeit any protection that the law attempts to offer um, whistleblowers. Yes. And we, we still have a law in South Africa that could give judges the power to force journalists to reveal their sources. Mm. I mean, Mario, why is it important that journalists should be allowed to keep their sources confidential? And shouldn't that apply to whistleblowers as sources? Ab absolutely, absolutely. The, unfortunately, the entire freedom of the press, uh, the concept of freedom of press in South Africa has not been defined 
on the same level as in other countries. In the United States, pa Congress can pass no laws relating to the press. And that has created enormous amount of protection. Here, there is the notion that human rights can be limited. It's a terrible notion. And under that umbrella, the freedom of the press has been severely limited. Severely limited. The most one of the most important aspects uh, within journalism is that of keeping the, uh, the secrecy of the force. Anonymous. Yes. Anonymous. And, and obviously, journalists will face the consequences of that. I mean, if it comes uh, to a libel lawsuit, uh, not being able to reveal the sources, may not enable the journalist to protect himself uh, Mm. from uh, uh, allegations that he or she acted negligently. But that freedom is essential. The same comes in respect of the secrecy legislation. Mm. See, on the public domain defense that we've been trying to insert in the legislation, he who leaks goes to jail. He who publishes doesn't go to jail. Mm. It's the Assange WikiLeaks situation. Mm. The GI who leaked all the information went to jail. Mm. Assange cannot be incriminated because he's a journalist. Mm. And that's so important that the legislation as it now stands would carry the, 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 the jail penalties even in respect of those who, who publish the information once it's no longer mm. secret, when they've left the secrecy, yeah. when, the secret, when the secret is out of the bottle. Yeah. I mean, journalists and whistleblowers are already the servants of our democracy. M Mario, I mean, you're on this uh, secrecy committee yes. in Parliament. What's your sense? You interact act a lot with the ANC MPs. Why are they uh, holding on to these draconian measures that threaten to punish whistleblowers and journalists? Well, nowadays the ANC seems to be divided on each and every issue. So it's difficult to know who you're talking to. Uh, the, the ANC must be praised for having taken what was a terrible bill into what is a good bill with a couple of very bad things in it. And we need to just take out those couple of bad things and enable a public interest defense uh, to be there, a public yeah. domain defense, and it would be a very advanced piece of legislation. Yeah. But they stopped before making these final steps. Somebody told them that they were going too far. And we always felt that within the committee that we were negotiating, not, not just with the members of the committee present in the room, but with somebody who was behind the scenes. Mm. And I'm not within the privy no or the ANC mechanism, sure. but there is a power behind the curtains. Yeah. And it would be very nice if the Wizard of Oz came out from outside the curtain, yeah. from behind the curtain. Well, you, you can imagine that wherever power is being abused, there's some serious vested interests uh, that would like to see things not being exposed. Of course. And of course, in every, co every corridor is full of whistleblowers. They're people mm. who know what's going mm. on. Mm. And South Africa, I would imagine, would be a better place if more people were to speak out. Debbie, in, in closing, what would you say to, to whistleblowers or people who are sitting on information watching this show? I think for everybody to realize that they have a role to play. You know, everybody moans and gripes about corruption and how, and how much it costs the country. But a lot of people still think that it's a problem out there somewhere. Mm. You know, and for everybody to realize that every time somebody puts money into their back pocket, takes that bribe or whatever, that is impacting on your life. Because mm. that is money that could have gone to, to building hospitals, to building homes, to, um, yeah you know, developing the education system. So it does affect you. Absolutely. So get excited about it. Lorraine, that number again, if people are sitting with information, the first thing they should do, which is completely legal and safe, is to call yes. ODAC. The number. 0800-525352. Great, and we'll get that up on the screen shortly. Uh, that brings to the end our show this evening. I think it's, a, it's an issue that sits with all of us. All of us are in organizations where people are using, and very often, let's be honest, abusing their power. We think back to the World Cup where the country was booming with vuvuzelas. Let's hope one day we'd have a South Africa that is also full of whistleblowers on every corner, uh, really alive and sounding the trumpet of truth. 
letting the information flow so that we can have an accountable democracy, people in power, whether they're in the government or in the private sector or in our own organizations and trade unions, are held to account and uh, can then fulfill their, their roles properly and the country can prosper. Thank you very much for being with us this evening on Free Media, Free Minds. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Uh, the show was brought to you by the Frederick Ebert Stiftung Alternative Information Development Center and Cape Town Community Television. Thank you very much to them and we'll see you next week.